And good morning and welcome to today's Accelerate to Industry session. I just wanted to give you a friendly reminder as you guys are coming into the session that you have to be able to attend three events to be added to our AI LinkedIn group where you can connect with a lot of the companies and representatives that are part of our program. Today, I'm really genuinely excited because I have the pleasure of introducing wonderful former colleagues of mine, Candace Richardson, George Meeks and Kayla Dyson. They are here today representing the London Stock Exchange, or LSEG for short, like a lot of us that uh, work there, who used to work there, refer to it. And they're going to be sharing their wisdom on showcasing your experience on your resume. Uh, Candace is a production manager, and she's also currently pursuing her doctorate in business administration here at UNC Charlotte. So we're very excited to have her here. George is a senior specialist um, in talent acquisition and also a USC Charlotte alumni. And Kayla's a recruiter as well. She recently started at LSEG. Just to give you a bit of background, uh, LSEG is a global financial markets infrastructure business. It's diversified global business focuses on information services, risk and balance sheet management, and capital formation. They're also a leading developer of high performance trading platforms and capital market software for customers really all over the world. And in addition to the groups on markets, over 35 other organizations and exchanges actually use the group's Millennium IT trading, uh, surveillance, and post-trade technology. The group can trace its history back to 1698. It's headquartered in the United Kingdom, but they have significant operations, especially here in North America, uh, with an office in the Carolinas, in Fort Mill, actually, in Italy, in France, in Sri Lanka, and Romania. The group employs approximately 5,000 people and has grown significantly in the last several years. Uh, due to a series of acquisitions that really has increased its global footprint very significantly. Please join me in giving a genuine warm welcome to Candice, George, and Kayla, and thanking them so much for taking time out of their busy schedule to be here with us today. Thank you guys for being here. Candice, it's all yours. Great. Thank you so much, Ivana. And thank you, Dr. Herto, as well, for having us today. We're really excited to be here to be able to show you how to showcase yourself on your resume. And I'm also really glad to have two of my co-hosts here, George Meeks, as well as Kayla Dyson. So today we have a lot planned for you. Um, we want to start off just kind of giving you some of our background and then we'll kind of dive into our material. So thanks again for joining us. I know that, you know, you've had a couple of these over the last couple of weeks. Um, these are great events to really get you introduced to the different companies, the different functionalities, and to really get you thinking about your career and how to go about it. So really excited. So what I'll do is I'll pull up our PowerPoint and then I'll give you guys some of my background um, as well as George and Kayla's. All right, so let me make sure you guys are able to see my screen. Yeah, we're good there. All right, perfect. All right, guys, so let's get started. Um, so this presentation will be on showcasing your experience on your resume. And we like to call this the resume builder. Right. All right, look here. Technology is so fun. And we're all, we're all learning. <laughs> Are you guys still able to see my screen? Yep, so we're like seeing the colorful yeah. umbrellas. And then, okay, yep. let's try this again. Yep. Do, 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 do. You can max it if you want. Or put it in yeah, I'll do that. Or yeah. in presentation mode, whatever is easier for you. Yeah, sorry about this, guys. It actually just closed out on me. All right. Okay. There we go. Yep, yeah, we can see the first page. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. All right. Huh. All right. Okay, thank you for rolling now. It wants to roll ahead of me. Yes. <laughs> All right. These are the times that we're in. Fun times. 
So just to kind of give you guys some information about myself, I'm Candace Coatson Richardson. So I'm a graduate of the University of South Carolina. Uh, my undergraduate degree is in sociology and business. And my master's degree is from Strayer University. And I'm currently a 49er. So I'm studying my doctorate in business administration. Um, I'll graduate in 2023. So my research area that I'm really interested in is transformational leadership as well as mentorship. So I'm really hoping that my dissertation um, will be end up being in that area. Um, as we all know, we start school and we're like, oh, I think we want to do this. I think we want to do that. Um, so hoping to kind of make a decision by the end of the year um, so that all of my papers and stuff can just kind of get me in that mind frame for that final dissertation. So as far as my career, just to give you guys some background, so my area of expertise is primarily in training, project management, and education. So I've been fortunate enough to work for different sectors. I've worked for the Department of Education in South Carolina, where I was over some of the grant money that came. So it was part of a economic stimulus package um, in which I traveled around the state of South Carolina to the different high schools. Um, we were doing a workforce planning initiative in which it gave the students the opportunity to gain some experience from working, um, as well as it gave them some credits that they may have missed out on during the year. I've also worked for the South Carolina Enterprise and Information Systems, where I was a training coordinator. Um, so this was a large scale initiative for the state of South Carolina, where we were implementing SAP. Um, I've also done some data analytics work, where I worked for Tire Intelligence, um, which is a marketing company that looks at tire prices. So we were basically taking the information, repackaging it and reselling it. Um, currently, I work for the London Stock Exchange Group as a production manager in which I'm responsible for helping to implement new teams and also helping with the maintenance of the teams. So this is from looking at operations, looking at KPIs and so forth to keep our teams operational and also to kind of increase productivity. So from my background, you guys are like, how did you get to do all of these things? <laughs> um, and that's kind of the fun part of, you know, being in a career. You don't have to continue to do the same things. Um, you need to be able to diversify yourself. Um, and all of that diversity that I've had over the years has kind of led me into my role now. So if I'm able to take my role and dissect it, you know, I can pick up different things that I've done from each one of these positions. Um, and I must say that was some of the best career advice that I received um, as I was pursuing my master's degree was to learn anything that you can, you know, whether it's sitting with people, finding mentors, finding sponsors, um, or just kind of taking that initiative upon yourself um, to be heard, to be seen, and to put yourself out there. So I want to encourage each and every one of you guys that, you know, if you're in your BAU and if you have extra capacity, definitely take on some of those roles. You know, put your hand up and say, hey, how can I help? Or is this something that I can do? Um, that's that's kind of how I've that's one thing that I've done throughout my entire career. Um, some other things that I've been able to do throughout my career is I've been able to get some international business experience, um, which is always great. Um, anytime you can add those types of things to your resume. Um, I've also been able to start internship programs. Um, I've been able to help out with career fairs. I've been able to help out with other types of initiatives because I put myself forward. And that's one thing that I really want you guys to get from this presentation today is it's not always the opportunities that you have, but it's sometimes those opportunities that you make for yourself. 
So other, um, other items about myself. So currently, I'm one of the co-leads for our Black Employee Network Group, Being, um, for the London Stock Exchange Group. So this group was created to help inspire our Black employees and provide a safe space for them to discuss recent issues that are going on in the world, as well as an opportunity to empower and build these employees. Um, I've also worked within our Women's Inspiration Network, in which I help curate different events that we did throughout the year, financial literacy. Um, we've also done events with the Girl Scouts, in which we were able to pair the Girl Scouts up with different women from our business, which was a whole lot of fun. Um, we had a whole what, 20, maybe 20 Girl Scouts in our office for the day. So we took them on a tour. Um, we also did a special project with them where we worked with different little beads um, and we created a business for them. Um, at the end of the day, them alongside their mentor, they pitched their business. So they were able to tell us about what their business was, um, the name of their business, and how much they would sell their products for. So we ended up with some bracelets that cost a million dollars. <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and as you can kind of see, just from me talking about my experience, it's not only the things that you do on a daily basis that makes your career. Um, it's also those other opportunities in service or opportunities where you're able to give back that really make a difference. So without further ado, um, I want to give my colleagues the same opportunity to share their experience. Um, so we'll hear from George Meeks um, as well as Kayla Dyson. Let me unmute myself. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you, George. All right, awesome. Um, so thanks for that, Candace. And I think you hit on a lot of great points in, in the sense of how career trajectories go and how they're never truly linear, um, always has the kind of uh, spikes and ebbs and flows of it. Um, but nonetheless, I'm George Meeks. I've worked here at LSEG for about three and a half years. Um, I actually joined um, coming out of my time at UNC Charlotte, so go Niners. Um, I graduated in 2016 with a history degree. So just as Candace mentioned, um, you know, it's interesting to see how different career paths go where you may not go into an industry in which you're classically trained. Um, so for me, it was, uh, you know, really trying to figure out what skill sets did I have, um, what could I gain from you know, what my academic training has given me and how can I apply that to where my true interests lie? Um, you know, I really do love, you know, what we do at LSEG. I love, you know, kind of the financial markets uh, um, industry and, and, you know, really anything dealing with finance, infrastructure, technology, all those really up my alley. I just am not much of a savant in those actual functions. So uh, HR was a way for me to kind of connect the business aspect to, to more of the, 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 you know, people empowerment, human capital aspect of things. Um, and for me, it's, you know, it's been really great to see how HR is not only, you know, I think people see it as a big admin arm. Um, it's, it's really one that, you know, drives performance of the business that, you know, helps, uh, you know, um, uh, find synergies, build out organizational designs and capabilities, um, you know, uh, brings out the best talent in folks and brings out the, you know, the, the best in people, I believe. And my focus here um, in recruitment um, is really between our roles that our manager level up to director, um, focusing heavily on diversity and inclusion. I think that's something that, mm -hmm. you know, we have always uh, at LSEG really um, impressed upon and made sure that we drive that home in, in all facets um, and truly have to live by those values. And, you know, for me, that's something that really, um, that, that's really passionate on my list. Um, I know for me, we, I'm a co-lead on the Proud Network, which is our, you know, LGBTQ network in which we, uh, we host events with you know, um, networks like the Being Network, where we talk about intersectionality, where we talk about, you know, our different experiences. We've had panels with the CEO, 
Um, we've done different events with other groups. And so it's really great to see not only, you know, share your own personal experiences with people who can relate, but also people who maybe can't relate and, and you know, bringing a lot of closer, uh, a community closer together within the, the LSEC culture. And that's what really drives um, a lot of what we do is the culture, um, and we always want to focus on how that culture empowers folks, how they can bring them full selves to work. Um, and although diversity is, is what you see, you know, inclusion is really that key to keep that door open and keep people engaged. And, you know, for me, that's something that's a, a huge focus in, in town acquisition. And, um, you know, on top of focusing on that with integration work that we have with multiple, you know, we'll have Right now we have the Refinitive acquisition going on, which is a, a very huge, uh, you know, M&A activity for us. And so there's a lot of work being done in the planning phases in the different work streams. So that's taken up, you know, part of our time too. And I know Candace can definitely attest to that. Um, but the great thing here, I would say, is for anybody who has come, you know, from anywhere where they don't feel like maybe even they got the full scope of experience. Um, for me, I came in as a coordinator, um, very entry level, we'll say, and, and, you know, have gotten the experience and the space to be able to take on, you know, uh, you know, uh, recruiting throughout North and North America, as well as London. Um, and so it's really exciting to see some of the opportunities that I think that LSEG has been able to provide people at all levels. Um, and for me, it's just been a, a great career opportunity and, and very happy to be speaking with you all about the uh, resume building and showcasing your skills. Um, I always loved hearing about these things when I was in school um, and still do, you know, and it helps uh, reinforce some of the things that, you know, we may forget to do on a regular basis. So I'm um, very looking forward to being a part of this panel and thanks everybody. Thank you, George. Kayla? Hello. So um, yeah, you guys both touched on really good points. I can guys give you guys a little bit information about me. So I am, I would say, pretty early in my career here. So this is my second job actually out of school. I graduated from NC State um, with a major in communications. Little did I know when graduating that I would be recruiting. Um, so I started out with a IT consulting company and I worked with them and I just kind of, with it being a very new company to Charlotte, it gave me a lot of opportunities to kind of see what was out there in the recruiting field. So I got to do a lot of campus recruitment. And I found out I really enjoyed it. So I kind of moved into a campus recruiting role for them for a year and a half. So helping them fill their graduate program there. And then I wanted to, con to continue to grow my career. So um, I started interviewing with a job at LSEG and I actually started in March. So about seven months in now here. And I handled the early careers recruitment and also help with the recruiting um, for North America. Um, so I will say, you know, being early on in your career and with the transfer of positions there, I've learned so much. And I never thought I could learn so much within seven months remotely. Um, I did start in the office, but it was only two weeks. So I didn't really count that. Um, so I learned a lot remotely. And it's crazy how we're all adapting. But just the fact of, you know, speaking to a bunch of different people and just all the different opportunities and working with a global company here. I never thought I'd be working with so many people through across the world, um, different time zones, waking up early some mornings and going to meetings and stuff like that. But it's really exciting. And I think just always being open to opportunities there and really just kind of seeing, you know, where your career takes you in a way who I think that's the crazy part about it. When I graduated, I had no clue, honestly, even what a recruiter was. And then doing some more research, taking that first role and stuff I've really developed in my career. Um, and so I focus a lot on the early careers and also like George touched on, I help with the diversity initiative here at LSEG. So making sure that we are a diverse employer. Um, I am unfortunately not a part of any of the groups that George or Candace are in because I joined so in the mix of all the virtual movement, but I do help support a lot of that. So I help with going to career fairs for 
the veterans, we're, we have a veterans infinity group here, um, the being, the proud. Um, so I do help a lot with that and engaging in opportunities on the recruit recruitment side so that we can recruit people um, from diverse backgrounds and really be a diverse employer here, um, along with the early career side. So making sure that we're partnering on campus with different um, diverse groups on campus to make sure that we are um, getting the word out about LSEG and the careers that we have um, opportunities, which is super exciting. So super excited to be a part of the company. It's continuing to grow a ton, which is really crazy and really exciting as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about me here. Um, move it, give it back to Candice. Great. Great. Thank you for sharing, um, Kayla. I really appreciate that. So as you guys can see, we have a good mix of people here at LSEG. Um, and as you can kind of also see, is that LSEG has been a great promoter of growth for each one of us. Um, and that's one thing that you really want to look for as you're finding your next career or as you're changing careers, um, the culture. You want to understand what the culture is. You also want to understand, you know, how can I make this work for me? So moving back over to our presentation. All right. Okay, so as for today, we're going to go through a couple of different lessons um, as we've kind of broken them out for you guys. So the first one will be what makes a great resume. Uh, the second one will be optimizing transferable skills. We'll also do a resume review checklist, leveraging social media. And then, of course, you guys all came to learn about the London Stock Exchange Group. So we'll talk more about our internship and graduate assistantship programs, as well as answer any questions that you guys have. All right, so story time. So the first thing that you wanna do whenever you are creating your resume, you want to look at your resume as a first impression. You know, you want to talk about who are you? What do you stand for? Um, you also want to showcase your experience. You want to talk about your achievements. You want to talk about your education. You want to talk about those soft skills. So we'll give you some information that you can definitely take with you um, throughout the course of this presentation. You'll also find some resources that you can use as well. So kind of starting off. Um, so a resume typically has a couple of different sections. You usually have a summary or objective. So this is kind of your elevator speech. This should be three to four sentences where you kind of talk about um, this is my name, this is what I'm doing. You wanna really emphasize any industry experience that you have there. For instance, if I was talking about myself, I would say, hi, my name is Candace Coatson Richardson. I have worked within education, project management and training for 15 years. So that's a quick synopsis of your experience. Um, so you want to just kind of make sure that you're upfront about how many years of experience that you have. You want to talk about your industries. You want to talk about your sectors. And then you want to kind of work your way into talking about your work experiences and your achievements. So let's talk about performance. So as you talk about performance in your resume, you wanna make sure that you're highlighting those key achievements that you've had, whether you've saved money for the company, um, whether you've managed a team, um, you want to make sure that those items are highlighted um, as that could be a deterrent as far as if you get to move to the next level or not. So in the example below, um, we have an example of a territory sales manager. All right, so a bad example would just to say, um, sold commercial vehicle tires, all right? So a good example met and exceeded yearly divisional goals by 23%, became the number one salesperson for the third year in a row. So in the bad example, this may just be something that you could have just kind of copied over from a job description. 
But in that good example, it clearly states what you have done. And that's what the managers are looking for as far as what are your contributions? What is your value add? So if you have items that you can kind of inter interchange um, with that, the better, because this clearly states and tells me that you have not only met your goal, but you've exceeded your goal by 23%. OK, it also tells me about the value to your company um, by stating your role as the number one salesperson. OK. Then we have that third year in a row. So that tells me that this isn't a one time phenomenon. OK, so this is just something to kind of keep in mind as you're kind of structuring those particular objectives. The other thing that I really want to highlight is really talking about your key responsibilities that you're doing on a daily on a daily basis. So for me, what I like to do um, anytime I'm working on my resume or working on other people's resumes is I really like to talk to them and say, okay, let's start at eight o'clock. What do you start doing at eight o'clock? What do you do at nine o'clock? What do you do at 11 o'clock? And so forth, just to kind of make sure that you have a clear view of what you're doing throughout the day. The next thing that I like to do is I like to prioritize it, right? So we all have things that are super important for us to do on a daily basis. So those are the things that you really want to make sure that you elaborate on. So something such as filing papers, um, that would be something that you would maybe want to put at the bottom of your list. But if you're responsible for doing so many sales calls a day or if you're responsible for getting so much advertising, those are things that you really want to highlight to set you apart. Other things that you want to highlight are awards and recognitions. So those awards that we sometimes like to just hmm, throw in the back of the trunk or, um, you know, throw in the desk drawer. Make sure that you're keeping track of those awards and make sure that you're listing them out on your resume. Um, these awards definitely show that you're going above and beyond um, for myself. Um, I've won one of the CEO awards for the London Stock Exchange Group for integrity for the work that I did with the Women's Inspiration Network. So that's definitely something that I have on my resume. Um, it's also something that I put on LinkedIn because that's a very coveted award within the company. So make sure that you're keeping in track of anything that you're winning or any recognition that you're getting. Um, the other thing that I like to tell people is, you know, use LinkedIn. You have the ability to get recommendations there. Um, ask the manager, you know, if you want an award, would you mind um, putting something on my LinkedIn channel or writing me a recommendation list? Okay. Moving on to education and technical skills. Education, that's why we're all here today. Um, so education is definitely a big one, um, you know, but certifications are just as important, um, especially when you're talking about project management. You have the PMP that you can get. There are also other types of certifications such as IDLE. Um, you also have SHRM and other memberships that you may be a part of. Um, LinkedIn learning. There's a lot of education that you can do there. You can get those certifications. You're able to download them into LinkedIn. Definitely showcase what you are doing. Um, coursework can also be used to kind of help you if you're transitioning from one role to another role or one industry to another industry. But make sure that you are listing what you're doing because it's very important. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money um, on education. So we wanna make sure that we are making it work for us. Your technical skills are another biggie for resumes. Um, it may not be that you have the exact experience technically that um, they're looking for, but you may have something that may be equivalent. So just kind of keep that in mind um, such Things for technical skills, you have Jira, you have Salesforce, you have um, Dropbox, uh, you have Evernote, and so many other types of technical skills. So make sure you're listing those out 
Um, and one thing with Microsoft Office, just put Microsoft Office Suites. Um, you know, most people know Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Um, I would advise from listing those out individually. All right. So the next thing is service and volunteer work. Um, as you kind of heard at the top of the hour about some of the service work and volunteer work that we do within the company, those are great things to list out. Um, also, if you're a part of any volunteering outside of the company, um, make sure that you list that out. Um, it shows your it shows that you're committed to diversity. It also shows your involvement. Um, it also demonstrates teamwork. And those are things that are important to organizations as they continue to build their culture. Um, you know, we want people who are very diverse. We want people who will help out with volunteering. Um, a couple of years ago now, um, I did a company-wide initiative um, where we did a charity event. So I was like, hmm, what can we do to make this fun? So we ended up dividing all of the different groups within LSEG um, into a particular color. So each group was given a specific item to collect. Um, and then we had a big reveal day where everyone represented their team colors. Everyone came in um, with the colors. We did like a big breakfast and we had the charity to also come in to talk about where those donations were going. So that was a great event. We probably had 90% participation. And this was something that um, I did for our Fort Mill office. So we have about 250 people there. So throughout this donation volunteering effort, we were able to fill a minibus plus like five or six different cars as well. Um, and the donations went from canned goods. We also had um, housing items, pots, pans, everything. We also had stuff for the daycare. We also had stuff for the office. So make sure that you're including those types of initiatives as well. Moving on, transferable skills. What's in your toolbox? Um, this is also what I like to call the power of you. When I think about transferable skills, I translate this into power. Um, these particular skills are not tied to a particular industry or a sector. These are things that belong to you. So in the middle, you'll kind of see this word cloud that I've created. So in this word cloud, you'll see different words like organization, research, negotiation, coaching. These are items that you get from anything that you're doing, whether you're in working in a class project, um, you know, with your projects, you have to be diplomatic, you know, you have to be persuasive. Um, there may be a time where, you know, you have to motivate the group or you may have to do some creative thinking in order to answer the question. These are major benefits, guys. And if you're able to incorporate some of these transferable skills and merge them with your job descriptions or, you know, as you're doing your objectives, the better. To the right, you'll see a couple of quotes that I love. Um, and I'll just kind of highlight this last one. You don't hire for the skills. You hire for the attitude. You can always teach skills. Um, this is something that I love from the founder of Southwest Airlines, because you always want people with good attitudes. You know, skills can definitely be taught, but you can't beat having someone with the right attitude. This is a little exercise that I've found to be very helpful with mind mapping. And this is something that I currently use. So this is just a quick example. So this is a job description that we have to the left. Um, pretty basic job description. But as you can see, what we've done here. So we have the relationship building in the middle. And so what I've done is I've pulled out those different transferable skills in order to build up that particular objective. So we have networking. So building a rapport and a connection, creative thinking, new ideas and ways to get people interested, organizing, organizing a distribution channel or a list of contacts, 
Um, we've also done the same thing with communication. But you want to take a look at job descriptions and you want to see how can you evolve them and make them more mature instead of just kind of copying and pasting um, the job descriptions. So if you just kind of think about some of these, which candidate would you be more interested in? Would you be more interested in a candidate that just lists out enthusiastic volunteers needed to be a voice for our programs, events, and works? So this person may just say, helped out with programs, events, and works. Or would it be more convincing if you say networking and building a rapport? So those are just kind of things to kind of keep in mind, um, you know, as you're applying for jobs. Um, this is something that I do. I'll take a job description and I'll just kind of say, what are the things that I currently do? What can I pull out from my toolbox or from my skill set? Right. So on the next slide, I have a couple of resources for you guys um, for mind mapping. We have Lucid Chart, Mind M Up, Mind Mister. There are also a couple of websites that you guys can go out to to learn more about transferable skills and how you can kind of optimize them in your resumes. So our next section, I will turn it over to Kayla Dyson, who will talk about resume reviews. Hello, please ignore my dog in the background. She always likes to get in these video conferences for some reason. Um, but yes, I am here to talk about resume review. And I know you guys have probably heard this a million times before. Um, so I'm just going to reiterate kind of the general knowledge about resumes here. So one thing I always like to tell people is list out all your achievements on a sheet of paper within school, within work, within internships, within jobs, um, because that could be very helpful when you are creating your resume, because you will need to tailor it to de depending on what kind of area you're looking for. So if you're applying for a project manager role and then you're applying for a you know recruiter role, two completely different things there. But you know, I'm sure you had skill sets in either of those, but there's no reason to put um, you know, can source on LinkedIn versus has fluent skills in Microsoft Suite and has, you know, X amount of different kind of qualifications there. So make a list so that way it's easy to target when you are creating your resume or altering it. If you see a job position there and you just need to quickly change, you know, a couple of the skill sets there or something like that to tailor depending on which job. That is very important. And then also a website I like to tell people is something called Tag Crowd. Um, it is a website where it will kind of highlight keywords within a job description. So you can put the job description in the like search or like paragraph box there. And then it will highlight certain words. So that way you can really kind of alter your resume according to each job. So if it has a job description where it is um, proficient in Excel for one, you know, team oriented, data driven, something like that. So that way you can kind of pick out those words and alter your resume to have those words in there. Um, so those are two tips I give people when they are asking about a resume. And then also, you know, depending on what role you're applying for, either if it's going to be a creative role or more of a business role, kind of tailoring your resume to that. Creative roles are going to want more color in their resume, more like pop and stuff like that. For a business role, it's going to look more like straight and simple, like X, Y, and Z. I want to see you have the skill sets. Okay, you have them. Great. Let's move forward. So when you are a recruiter and when I'm sharing resumes with a hiring manager, um, each hiring manager has a little different preference. But when I'm a recruiter and scanning these resumes before sending, I, my main goal is just to look and see the qualifications and skills. Um, and making sure that you know you're fitting the job description and it looks like a good resume to pass forward and then i pass forward to our hiring managers and then they kind of make the final decision there if they want to interview or not um i know each company is a little different some companies will run their resumes through a program beforehand to see what they're kind of doing there and then some will um you know just kind of have a recruiter scan so it just really depends on what company you're applying for there um but i would say you know make sure that you are aware of that and you know 
making sure that you have that kind of skill set that they're looking for and take time, look at the job descriptions. Um, when you are in a certain position, you could be applying for multiple different roles that are very similar. So it doesn't take much just to change one thing there. I'm so sorry. She does this every video call. <laughs> um, and then, so that's one thing I would suggest there. And then also if you move to the next slide, just some key points of kind of figuring out what to do there. So making sure your font is in the same. I do know sometimes when you are, you know, creating a resume, the font does get challenged there. So like change or whatever. So just make sure you read over that. Cause when you are reading over a resume, sometimes that you don't even think about it. So it's good to have someone else look at it, not even for the content, but just to get a separate set of eyes. Cause I know sometimes with misspelling, I'll read a word and I'll read it correctly, but I know it's misspelled, but I just, in my brain, I don't think it through there. So making sure that's right, making sure that, you know, your everything's in the right color, just simple things, spell check, content check, making sure it's readable, making sure that it's concisive. Don't add a ton of words just to add them, make sure that they are accurate there. And, you know, you don't have to have 500 adjectives, make it like straight to the point there because, and the scheme of things, we don't have much time. And I know at like a career fair or something, when people are handing resumes, um, the virtual events are a little different because we get the resumes either ahead of time or we get them, you know, we can see them after or something like that. But with career fairs, you know, we're handed resumes, we have a quick second to look, and then we're moving on to the next one. So, you know, just making sure that there is something that stands out, but it's very concisive, it's very clear easy to read. So when we are passing along, highlighting your skill sets, highlighting everything there so that, you know, we are clear on what your skill sets are and what you're doing. So that way it makes it pretty easy there. So that's my little bit there. I'm sure you guys have heard that a million times. Um, and yeah. Great. Thanks, Kayla. So our next section is going to be leveraging social media. So I'll turn this over to George. Awesome. Thanks, Candice. Yes. Yeah, so in today's age and time, I know we all have social media, so we all need to understand what types of social media there are, how you can leverage them in your favor, and also how they can uh, they can hurt you and not be in your favor, right? Um, so when thinking about, you know, first of all, social media profile pictures, right? If you're using LinkedIn, try and make sure that your profile picture is only of you, um, preferably in business attire, at least business on top. Uh, I think as we know in today's agent time, once again, that you don't have to be fully dressed to do a nice uh, a nice uh, profile picture of your, of your upper half. So things like that are very key. Um, also think about what not to post. Post as if, you're, as if your employer is watching. Um, and remember that privacy and discretion is key. So think about how your profiles are set up. If you have a LinkedIn profile, make sure that, and we'll move on to the next slide where it talks a little bit about, um, you know, what to, what to post and what not to post. Um, so, you know, from when thinking about your different types of social media profiles, everybody may have a Facebook, a Twitter, uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, you know, we want you to use these platforms appropriately, um, and you should think about how you're using those um, and what to post and what not to post. So I always like to think about it, uh, you know, as first of all, what not to post, right? So don't mix business and pleasure. Uh, don't, don't mix business with those personal matters, we'll say. Um, if you have uh, content that you wish to keep with family and friends, think about your privacy settings, uh, create alternative profiles if need be. Um, but also don't, you know, don't post super negative comments when it comes to certain things, um, uh, mainly when it comes to, in, like I said, in today's times, things go viral. You never know who's watching and who could see things. And so just be mindful of uh, the comments that you post. Um, one thing that I do like to just put out there is LinkedIn is not a political platform or a dating site. Uh, you'll find the more you get on there that you'll see that people use them for both a little too much. So be mindful of how you're using these sites. Uh, you never know who you could be talking to. They could be another colleague. They could be a, a future manager or whatnot. Um, for your professional uh, networking sites, we we you know recommend using something like a LinkedIn uh, if you're into 
technology. GitHub is also a good way to showcase your technology skills. Um, but when you're updating your, you know, thinking about what to post, you know, update your information, include relevant details, such as, you know, making sure you have a professional photo, your most recent achievements, um, talking about awards you've won, like as Candace mentioned, you always want to use these platforms as ways for you to, um, you know, elevate yourself and, and put yourself in the best light. I was lucky enough to win a uh, our HR Global Team Award. Um, of course, you know, it was a very nice plaque that we got and it was very nice to get that global recognition, but I was very sure to make sure I got it up on LinkedIn that, you know, making sure too that, you know, people got to see that value that I get to add to the, to the organization and from an objective point of view, rather than me, you know, just saying, hey, this is what I did. This is what my peers said that I did, or this is what they've really, um, you know, given me recognition for. So that's a key a key way for you to use that, that LinkedIn platform. And then kind of moving into the networking aspect of social networks, um, how to leverage these networks that you have. So you have multiple platforms in which you you you're you know using and when first of all when you're thinking of networking it's the classic cliche network 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 you want to always be thinking about who you're talking to who you are and how you can present yourself to people because like i said once again you never know um if you know somebody in this forum could be a a, a future uh, manager they could be a future colleague the folks uh, watching this now you guys could be future associates or somebody could be my future manager as well right so i want to be able to to you know put myself in the best light as all at all times as, as everybody should um you know looking to professional networks in which you can join um, you know, in HR, we have the Human Capital Institute, we have SHRM, you know, there's different uh, uh, associations for, you know, depending on even if you want to look at affinity groups, you know, within your own associations like the Black Accountants Association, uh, Women in Technology, things of that nature. It also helps highlight, you know, the diversity within, you know, maybe an underrepresented group um, within a certain function or, or, um, or skill set. Um, you know, think about your social networks, what you can use there. There's always uh, opportunities, even in your your more personal social spaces to advertise and, you know, network um, and show off your skill sets and what you've achieved. Because once again, your friends, your, peer, your peers, their peers may see these things and could also be a proliferation to, to more, um, you know, kind of more higher touch and engagement in different areas of your uh, selected career choice, we'll say. Um, and think about the platforms which you can use. We talked about LinkedIn. Your resume is a good one. Uh, it's a great way for you to promote yourself. Um, if you apply for something, that is the that is your marketing page right there. That is your you know it's like Candace said, it's where you should be telling your story. It should be where you're showing your performance uh, measures, where you've come in and, and added value. Um, so think about all those platforms as ways to leverage your network and and to promote yourself. Um, and then, you know, moving into the next bit of networking is how to network, right? Um, you know, we want to think about the quick pitch. You may hear it as an elevator pitch, the quick pitch, however you may want to think about it. Always look at it quickly with those five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. So who are you? You know, you want to know, just like as Kansas mentioned in your uh, you know, in your um, interviews, you want to tell that story. Who are you? You want to be clear, you want to be concise, um, but you also want to be thorough in, in letting people know who you are and, and you know, moving into the, the what, what makes you special. That should be something that kind of shows out, you know, as you, as you talk about yourself. There should be something in there that that you know that that shows that you you stand out right and that you you belong to let's say you're talking to somebody from a professional organization right and you want to join this network you know what makes you special um is definitely what's going to help them you know uh know what value you're going to bring to them as well as what uh, value they can add to you um you know when are you available to engage knowing that you know if you are starting to network and engage with folks, whether it be in applying for jobs, whether it be uh, with professional networks, affinity groups, knowing your your kind of uh, cadence of engagement is really great. Uh, knowing if afternoons are best for you, right? Or knowing if mornings are best. Knowing, um, hey, I'm ready to join this group ASAP. Or, I, you know, actually I need to, you know, um, I have a notice period I need to work. You know, things like that. It just shows that you're very proactive and, and, and aware, um, which which really leads into the the where are you looking to be as well, right? If you're aware and you, you're cognizant 
cognizant of, of where you are currently. It's where you're looking to be, whether it could be physically, you know, where you're working physically. It could be where you're looking to be career wise. Um, it could be a myriad of things. Right. Um, but always knowing what your path looks like or what a clear path forward would be for you. Um, always being flexible and knowing that you can take some some direction and guidance from people who actually have maybe been there and, and, and done that before. So. Mm -hmm. And that moves into the last bit of the why. So it goes back into it, it all circles back into the, uh, the other W's of, you know, why should one choose you? Um, you know, what makes you special? Um, you know, who you are should all be the reasons why someone should choose you. So um, moving into the next bit of social media and having an active profile, there's a few different, um, uh, you know, key points we'll say that are key for, um, I'd say, maintaining a engaged and active profile so first of all is engagement make sure that you are posting that you're you're engaging with you know people within your social networks you know on linkedin that you're, you may comment on a post you may congratulate a a colleague it just really keeps you visible you'll find that that visibility adds a lot to um to what people you know truly see out of you um you know making sure that you have good grammar i know we've talked about this before but it's really uh, if you see how much we talk about it, it probably should let you know how much we see the lack of, of uh, proper either, you know, sentence constructions or, if, you know, punctuations, things of that nature. Um, also being consistent in, in how you post or what you're posting, right? You know, you want to be a consistent, you know, uh, as you build your brand, you want to have consistency across that, right? And you want to, you know, people to know who you are through what you post, through what you put out there, um, and being very cognizant that what you put out there helps build your image, um, right? And so that that kind of flows into that bit of what image and brand are you building through, through your profile? And so not only do you have to think about that aspect, you have to think about you know how people are finding you, and hashtags are a great way of using that. I know we have, uh, we've seen that quite a bit here in you know over the past few years, but it's definitely a great way to highlight certain you know keywords um, or, or key sticking points in which you know people may be searching it through that, or, or you know it just may uh, it may land on people's pages a little bit. Uh, a little bit easier. So um, those are the, the main benefits of having that active profile. Um, and then moving on to video interviews. So this is a key uh, example, I'd say we have some, some real life examples earlier today when we were logging on, we kind of had some technical difficulties, we'll say. Uh, so it was good that we got on 30 minutes early to test our technology, right? Um, you never want to, you know, be the one, be the reason, even though technology happens, it's always, you never want to be the reason during an interview that something doesn't go go quite right. Now, on our end, we do advise the business that, you know, things happen, you can't hold people to these types of things. But if you put your best foot forward, then that's one less thing for you to have to worry about. So test your technology, make sure you're prepared, make sure you have your notes, make sure you know about the company, make sure you know who you are. Um, and, and when knowing about who you are, then the next slide will get more into that. But, um, you know, making sure you know who you are, who the company is, where you want to be, kind of all that, telling your story, making sure you have that all ready um, and, and kind of, you know, just at the click of a button ready to, to, to spout that off. Uh, and that all comes with practice. Um, so definitely spend that time, you know, before your interview, the day before, and, and you should always be kind of practicing your pitch and who you are. Um, and so make sure you're doing that practice and ultimately delivering upon that, right? Um, and so, you know, just putting, like I said, your best foot forward in an interview, um, delivering upon what you said that you, you know, said you would do. And that brings me to my favorite slide of this, uh, of Among Us, this game called Among Us that I'm vastly addicted to. And they always ask, is there an imposter among us? And so you find that people come into uh, to interviews, they have a great resume, they may, you know, give a great talk. And then they come in day one and they get their technology and day two, they have no idea what they're doing. Um, so, you know, it, it, you don't want to be an imposter. You, you definitely want to put your best foot forward. You want to make yourself, uh, put yourself in the best light, but you do not want to, uh, to quite frankly, lie about anything, you know, you do, because it will come out at some point. Trust me, you will see that I've, I've had plenty of people come on site sometimes and we come to find out, wait, they may not have the experience they said they would, 
Um, and then we, you know, we explore options in which that we can either help bring this person up to speed or help the business out on our end. Um, so just make sure that you are being forthcoming and forthright with all your skill sets, that you do not pose yourself as an imposter, um, and that you, you know, I think if you put, you know, your true self forward, that that's what people will see. And as Candace mentioned, you know, you hire the attitudes and the, tra the skills can be trained. So um, as long as you come in with a great attitude and be yourself, you know, the right company with the right culture will find, you know, you'll fit into the right uh, company with the right culture ultimately. So, um, so yeah. Great. Great. Thank you, George, for that. All right, so we gave you guys a lot of information um, today, and now it's time to put it all together, right? So this is my kind of twist on the SMART technique. Um, so as you guys are thinking about, you know, how do I go about even starting to redo my resume? Um, just kind of keep in mind, you know, just give yourself a time period for when you want to have it done um, as all of us have said today, get someone else to take a look at it, um, you know, get them to read it for proofreading, also grammar, um, say it out loud. Something that I also like to do whenever I'm writing um, is I'll do text to speech um, just so that I can sit here work by myself. And I'm like, OK, let me make sure that this that I'm hearing it the same way that I'm saying it. Um, and. The other thing I would say is, you know, make sure that whatever you whenever you decide to apply for a company, make sure that the company is also a good fit for you. Um, one thing that I like to do is go out and do research on the company. So I'll go out and, you know, I'll kind of scope them out put on my FBI cap um, and I'll take a look at the different managers. I'll look at, you know, what are the managers? How long have they been at the company? Um, what are their achievements? Um, and the other thing that I would say is find someone for your next step. And what I'll say about that is, you know, going out to LinkedIn and just say, hey, what do I feel like the next step is in my particular career path? Um, go out, see, you know, what is this person doing? Look at their skill set and say, you know, maybe this is something I can work on. You know, try to find gaps um, between your skill set and that person's. Also take a look at their service, take a look at their volunteering, take a look at their background to kind of get some ideas of things that you can do to kind of increase your skill set for that particular industry. So I know you guys are all here today um, because you heard London Stock Exchange Group and you're like, wait, is that is that here in the States? Is this real? Uh, that was kind of the same thing that I was thinking whenever I applied and went in for the interview. I was like the London Stock Exchange Group here in the U.S. I, can, I don't believe it. Um, so I went in for the interview and we are located here um, in South Carolina, actually. So we're in Fort Mill for those of you guys are really familiar. Um, we're maybe 10 miles over the line um, by close to Carowinds. So the London Stock Exchange Group, um, as Ivana has told you guys, has been around for hundreds of years. We have locations um, here in the U.S., we have an office in New York. We have an office here in Fort Mill. We have an office in Chicago. Um, London is our headquarters. We also have offices in Romania. We have offices in Colombo, um, also Kuching. So one thing I will say is that we're truly interconnected. Um, I'm on a daily basis. I'm working with my colleagues in London, um, also colleagues in other places, depending upon the project. So um, it's it's been great. Um, it's been a great experience just to kind of get to know other people, um, also to be able to travel to the other locations and just kind of really emerge yourself in the culture. And that's one thing that I really love about the affinity groups is that it gives us an opportunity to connect 
we have the multicultural committee um, in which we've kind of swapped different ideas that we've done. Um, we've done the Lunar New Year. Um, we've also done some plays off of the Chinese New Year as well. We have the Proud um, Network in which, like George said, we did the intersectionalities, which was an awesome presentation. We also have the Abilities Network in which we looked at neurodiversity. Um, we have the Veterans Network as well. So there are many opportunities to really get involved um, and do things outside of your day to day. Some other things that we have, so each year we do a Gallup survey and then we have a have your say. So out of the have your say, we develop different action items in which we encourage people from our group to kind of get involved, um, to have their say about, you know, how do we work together to change the culture? What are some things that we can propose um, to make it work better for all of us? So that was something that I was a part of this year as well. So I know you want to hear all about our graduate internship programs. So for this, I'm going to turn it over to Kayla. Hello. So yes, we do offer graduate internship programs in our New York City office, as well as our Fort Mill, South Carolina office. Right now, we are looking for interns that are interested in quantitative analysis in New York City. Um, so if you have an interest in being in New York or interested in quantitative analysis, please reach out. Um, the website, if you go to lseg.com slash careers, um, there will be a graduate page. If you click that, it will give you a little bit more information about that. Um, and then we do have a graduate program as well in Fort Mill and New York City, and those would be positions as a year-long program. You do two six-month rotations, one with your home team and one with another team, and then you would work with HR um, and the early careers department to get placed on a full-term position after that. So it's really a great opportunity to get involved, um, kind of learn about the different pro um, areas of LSEG, um, and also just kind of learn and kind of get into the business there. We also have a number of entry level positions. So check out our LSEG careers page because we do hire directly, not just through our graduate internship program, but onto specific teams for um, these programs. So definitely check that out as well. I don't know if George wants to add anything else there because he has seen the graduate internship program firsthand. This is my first year kind of going through it. Um, because I joined in March, the, last year was virtual. So I don't know if George wants to add anything there, um, but that is 